Okay, this is uh, going to be a video demonstration of how to use uh, T-logs on RGCopter. So, to put in context, there are um, a few different types of logs. We have uh, data flash logs and telemetry logs. Uh, data flash logs um, are from the onboard data flash on the APM recorded in flight. Uh, and T-logs are uh, telemetry logs which are uh, created whenever you connect a mission planner to an APM 2 or 1. Um, so where to find these logs? Um, if you look at the directory where your AP mission planner has been installed, you will find a logs directory. And inside of there, you'll see all the different logs. Uh, so a data flash log appears as, as .log. A T log appears as .tlog. Um, and R log, you don't need to worry about that. That's a telemetry log with additional um, information in it. It's called a raw log. Uh, a KMZ file is a uh, a Google Earth file. Um, never mind about that for now. Okay, so uh, here's a telemetry log, a T-log. Um, so what can you do with it? Um, some of the things that you can do, uh, if you come over here to the mission planner, flight data screen, telemetry logs area, uh, one thing you can do is you can extract uh, parameter information from this. So click on this T-log to KML or graph button this will appear and then you can extract parameters so you find that log, T log file you click on this and then you'll see right here it's created a param file you can drop that into Excel it appears as an unsorted list but you can easily sort it of course like this and now you have a list of every single uh, parameter and the value so for example I can see lots of things, but for example, this person has um, some compass offsets, and they're actually very high, too high actually. So, um, if you want to see a full list of parameters and their meanings, you can go into the uh, mission planners configuration, um, advanced parameters, uh, parameter list screen. It has a little description of them all. So, I was extracting parameters. Something else you can do, you can actually extract the waypoints as well, um, if the person was flying a mission. So push the Extract Waypoint button, find the T-log file again, see it over here, it is created, there we are, so it's created three little .txt files, which are mission files, uh, why are there three, uh, I'm not sure, maybe uh, the person had, um, uh, you know, uh, displayed the mission or had, you know, changed the mission while while it was connected to the to the mission planner, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, you can view this by going into the flight planner screen, and then clicking on the right mouse button, uh, file load SAID and load waypoint file, and select one of those files. So I'll select the second one, or actually the third one. Reset home to loaded coordinates. Let's say yes. There we are. So that's the person's mission right there. See all the little parts of it. Okay, uh, what else can you do? Um, we can, of course, uh, play the telemetry log. So if we can see in just what the pilot saw when he was connected to the mission planner while flying. So in this case, uh, there's two basic controls here. Um, We've got the speed, so this is running at normal speed, real time. Let's just speed that up because there's not much going on right here. So make it five times. Also, uh, this controls where in the log we're seeing, where we're, we're at. So we're at four percent. Doesn't seem to be much going on four percent. So let's just zoom forward a bit. We'll also zoom in. Now the interesting thing here is this should have been almost exactly like what the pilot actually saw when he was uh, when he was flying not harmed yet. All these all these bits just like the real thing. Ah oh, there you go. Now he's uh, he's loaded the mission and he's taken off and he's actually flying the mission. I'll just slow it down a bit. One of the other interesting things is that if you go to the status screen you can actually see a whole lot of different parameters um, changing just like they did um, when, when the person was flying. So let me just slow this down a little bit more. Let's have a look at some of these. So, for example, at this point, I can see, okay, the yaw. Just pause it for a moment. 
uh, you know, 183. So that means that the that's pointing down here, which totally makes sense. Uh, the pitch is one, basically one degree, so that's leaning back about one degree. The roll is five, so that's uh, leaning right five degrees. And obviously, um, well, there's a lot of other things inside of this screen. I won't go into it all, um, but there's, you know, there's a, there's a ton of information that's coming uh, from the APM to the mission planner. Okay, so you can do that. Um, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you can you can pause it. At, if there's a particular point where something went wrong, you can pause it and then have a look at exactly what, you know, what was the situation, or you can see exactly what the situation was at that time. Okay. And uh, the last thing you can probably do with the telemetry log is graph it. So push the graph button. This pops up. Ah, sorry, actually there's one more thing. You can generate a uh, KML file. So this is a Google Earth file. So I just click on that. There we are. So it's created a KML and a KMZ. Uh, KML has a little bit more information. I forget what the difference is between the two, but let's use the KML. And then here we can see the person is somewhere in Africa. And get rid of the points. And we'll zoom in. And now we can see, uh, you know, this is the we can see the, the whole flight uh, broken down by the different flight modes that the person was in. So let's just see for example. Uh, here's a stabilized portion of the flight, a very long stabilized, uh, and then an, and then an RTL. And uh, what might be more interesting is here's the auto mission that the person was flying. So you could compare this, say, to what we saw in the flight planner, and is it you know, is it is it the same? That's well, roughly the same. Sort of a triangle. Looks like he was pushed around a little bit here, but never mind. Um, okay, and the last thing, uh, like I was going to say, was the graphing. So you can push on this graph button, and then graph a log, pick the log file. Alright, then this screen appears, which has all of the different um, raw or all the different values that you could graph. Uh, and there is also this graph screen here, which displays the graph. So, for example, I could display the altitude. Uh, if I keep clicking it, it changes color. So if you're not happy with a particular color, just keep on clicking. Um, you can also, of course, graph more than one, one thing at once. So maybe I want to graph the, the roll and the altitude at the same time. Now, you couldn't see it, but actually I instead of pushing on the left mouse button, but push on the left mouse button on roll, then roll would have appeared here on and you know it would have immediately kind of made the altitude a lot less a lot more difficult to see. So um, what I did is instead of pushing the left mouse button, when I clicked on roll I pushed the right. And what that did is it put the scale for the roll on the right axis. So the altitude is on the left axis because I clicked with the left button and the rolls on the right axis because I clicked with the right button. Um, I won't go into all the values on the screen because there's a ton, but um, I guess some of the most important ones would be the um, the radio in, as it appears here, is Chan 1, 2, 3, up to 8. Uh, you can also see the, the output to the motors, so here we go. Uh, on servo 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, that's the motor output. It's very noisy, but that's that's totally normal. Um, what else? Uh, you can see heading, you can see the throttle. Oops, I can't see them there, so I'll just reset the scale to default. There we are there. Um, one thing which is interesting is, uh, maybe you haven't noticed this too much, is the mag heading. Sorry, the mag field, rather. So here's the magnetic field. It's the total length of the, um, of the, of the three magnetometer values it's the full length of this of this vector uh, and one interesting thing that's uh, in this is that you can compare say the throttle to the mag field and it will give you an indication as to how much motor interference the uh, the 
the compasses are the compass is experiencing. So here is mag field. And here's throttle. And you can see that there is definitely an, some interference going on. So the mag field should basically be uh, stable, mostly unchanging, but and it is when the throttle's off, but as soon as the throttle comes on, bang, 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 the, the mag field is, is getting longer and shorter. So um, this person probably needs to move their their compass further away from the from the ESCs or or other wires. Okay, that's it. Hope that was helpful.